Welcome to my honest review of the eagerly anticipated Kamisato Ayaka. Honest Reviews is something I started because I was sick and tired of clickbait videos misleading people into summoning for characters that they didn't need or didn't want, which in the long run will damage Genshin Impact. But enough about that, let's talk about the true Ice Queen, Kamisato Ayaka. Should you summon, save, or avoid like a Whopper Flower avoids a Eulaburst? Let's find out by getting lost in the world of Kamisato Ayaka. I'm not going to go through every single detail of a kit because quite frankly you can read I'm reliably informed but what I will do is bring together all the key pieces of information and then compare her against her main competition and explain to you why you should or shouldn't summon for Ayaka. Ayaka is a cryo DPS unit that has an attack rotation that buffs her own cryo damage. This creates a gameplay loop of attacking with N1C or N3C which is basically a, a one attack and then a charge attack or a three attack and then a charge attack if you're in Zingcho's burst. Once you apply the cryo damage bonus from a sprint you unleash her burst for huge damage that is the core gameplay of Ayaka. Her skill gives a really good particle regen but she will need a bit of help due to the 80 cost though in my experience from the gameplay this isn't as bad as what it initially feels like it's really manageable and you only need a bit of help from a battery. The only team comp to use her in that brings her to the Hu Tao Xiao levels is a permafreeze comp. This is because consistency is key to getting Ayaka to those damage levels of Hu Tao and Xiao and perma a freeze allows for that on a consistent basis. This is positive and a negative. It reduces her versatility in team builds, but also gives you a team that allows a Yaka to perform more consistently and much more easily than Hu Tao or Xiao. That's not to say Hu Tao or Xiao are particularly difficult to use, but just running a perma freeze a Yaka comp is just so much easier. The same applies to artifact sets. Don't try and be cool, just run a four piece Blizzard Strayer and enjoy your free damage. Weapon wise, there are plenty of good options. Mid Splitter is fantastic and clearly best in slot but if you have a jade cutter or summit shaper i personally wouldn't bother investing the primer gems in the mid splitter i just stick with what you have and save those primers for something else as for four star options it's basically black sword black cliff or the new inazuma weapon which is the best weapon for her due to it giving her burst more consistently okay so here's the honest review about ayaka how good is she at a base level, Ayaka is really good. How good she goes from that base level depends on what other units you have that allow for you to freeze everything around her. If you have a Zing Cho, or in the rare case a C4 child, then the potential to land every ult perfectly increases significantly. How does she compare to Hu Tao and Jiao? Well, she does a bit less damage than Xiao over multiple scenarios and is overall probably on par with Hu Tao, but in my opinion she is a lot easier to use than both and less greedy than Xiao. She is a very good hybrid of the AoE of Xiao and the single target of Hu Tao without being quite as good as them in their niche uh, categories, but better than them in their weaker categories as well. However, Xiao is super selfish and I think it remains to be seen if overall team DPS is higher with Ayaka than it would be with Xiao. All in all though, there's not a huge amount in it and with access to Perma Freeze, she is without a doubt much easier and the easier unit to use. One huge positive of Ayaka is her burst can hit in Venti's burst, which is a huge plus for her. She is not as good as Xiao or Hu Tao versus bosses due to the lack of freeze or the mobility that bosses can have. However, in any scenarios where enemies can be frozen en masse, she is easy mode. Personally, if I was an F2P player looking at what's coming ahead, I would highly consider summoning for a Yaka. The jury is out on the next two five stars when it comes to how good they will be in terms of damage or top tier viability. And Ayaka is here now and she is super viable. The freeze aspect of her kit has drastically improved my clear times on floor 12, 1 and 2 of Spiral Abyss. Her viability falls off significantly in content where you cannot freeze opponents. Her damage is backloaded into a queue which can sometimes have targeting issues. From my experience, we are talking about 10 to 15% of her ults don't go where you want them to. On the flip side, she is easily the second best DPS in the game in any content where Venti or Kazuha can group enemies together and they can be frozen. Overall, she's great, she's cryo and is very, very comfy to play in a perma freeze. Comp. I don't think Barlow Kokami will have the combination of ease of use and high damage that Ayaka has. Though I do see potential for Barl to hit huge thumbnail numbers, I feel like the setups will not be the easiest. The jury is out on those two. As for Kakami, I just feel the split scaling might actually hurt her in the long run. But again, nobody's played either of these two characters, so take what I'm saying there with a pinch of salt. That's my honest review. Take it or leave it. It's my honest thoughts on it. I think she's great, and I'm really enjoying using her. Take care. Thank you for watching. This has been Lost in the World. Let me know what you thought of my honest review in the comments. Hit a like, subscribe. Yada yada, follow on Twitch. Take care. Bye.